In the 1950s, the Soviet Union developed another route in tank development, which was to create tanks with extremely low profiles to increase survivability by reducing frontal projection area. They also incorporated anti-tank missile technology into these tanks. One of these tanks was the 288 Project, which was a medium tank. During this period, the Soviet Union also developed the 757 Project for heavy tanks. The 757 Project was like a patchwork monster because it emitted the scent of other tanks all over its body. The chassis used the structure of the T-10M heavy tank, while the running gear used the structure of the 770 Project. The turret was newly developed, but it was actually designed around a 125mm caliber rocket launcher. The tank's body structure was almost identical to the T-10M, with no major changes in overall layout, power, or operating systems. There were differences in armor protection, with the upper front armor only having a 76 degree sloping angle and a 98mm steel armor, which was not as thick as the T-10M's 120mm thickness. One of the advantages of the 757 project was the reinforcement of NBC, nuclear, biological, and chemical, protection devices, which improved its survivability in such conditions. In addition, the engine was changed to a B126F type 12-cylinder, four-stroke diesel engine with a jet cooling system, capable of outputting 850 horsepower, making the tank more maneuverable. The running gear used the air suspension and hydraulic mechanical transmission of the 770 Project, with five pairs of large diameter road wheels similar to main battle tanks like the T-55. The drive sprocket was at the rear and the idler wheel was at the front, without any return rollers. This type of running gear allowed the 757 Project to have the ability to travel at high speed smoothly, with slightly better maneuverability than the T-55. The tank had a combat weight of 44 tons and could reach a maximum speed of 65 kilometers per hour. The main gun of the 757 project was a rocket launcher that could only fire rockets and guided anti-tank missiles. The gun had a caliber of 125 mm and was equipped with an auxiliary loading mechanism. It used an aerodynamic control structure to open and close the breech. Its unguided rockets used high-explosive fragmentation warheads, while the anti-tank missiles used shaped charge warheads. The missile's initial velocity could reach 550 meters per second, with a maximum range of 4,000 meters. Its 5.5 kiloliter warhead could penetrate 500 millimeters of homogeneous steel armor, with a firing rate of 4 to 5 rounds per minute. Due to the narrow interior space, the length of the missile when fired reached 1.5 meters, and the tank could carry very few ammunition, with a total of no more than 30 rounds. In terms of armor-piercing capability alone, the anti-tank missile performance of the 757 was indeed excellent. However, it belonged to early technological exploration, and the missile's guidance aspect was lacking. The missile could easily lose its target due to smoke and other factors. According to some articles, the missile needed the gunner to align the beam with the target for guidance, so it was likely to be laser-guided. However, this technology only appeared in the 1960s, while the 757 project appeared in the late 1950s and was completely terminated in 1961, which does not match the timeline. Therefore, it may be some other type of technology. The 147 Research Institute was also developing a new drill gun-launched missile for the 757 project, which increased the muzzle velocity to 650, 750 meters per second and the maximum range to 9,000 meters. However, this research was not ultimately successful. The tank's secondary weapon was a 7.62 mm coaxial machine gun, and it was planned to install a 14.5 mm heavy machine gun for air defense on the top of the turret, although it was not reflected on the prototype. There was also a smoke generating device at the rear of the tank, which could be controlled remotely. The crew consisted of three people, the driver, the tank commander, and the gunner. The driver was located in the middle front of the hull, the tank commander was on the right side of the gun, and the gunner was on the left side of the gun. 
The tank was equipped with the TU-P3 intercom system for internal communication and the P-113 VHF radio for external communication. The development process of the 757 project went relatively smoothly. Except for the need for further improvement in the performance of the gun, it had basically reached the stage of practical use in other aspects. However, the late 1950s when it was born was a time of major transformation in Soviet armored weapons. At that time, the Soviet Union decided to stop the development of heavy tanks, and many research projects were cut. Although the 757 project only weighed 44 tons, it was considered heavy in its technological line. Therefore, the research work was stopped in 1960, and the Soviet Union focused its development on the T-64. According to the Soviet tradition at the time, discontinued projects were either put into museums or destroyed, leaving only the documentation. However, the 757 project disappeared after that. It was not until the era of Russia that a prototype of the 757 project was discovered on a training ground, and it was subsequently restored and displayed to the public. However, the original technical data was not archived, so even now, some of the tank's technologies are not well understood.